Hi, Michael Hurwich here for CreativeCow.net with a tutorial on adjusting the size of particles in a particle flow in 3ds Max 2014 based on the separation between the particles using the data operator. The particles are going to be on the surface of a sphere. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create the sphere. Just drag that out and set the radius to 40. Then right click. Now I'm going to create the particle flow. Particle systems and PF source. And right click. So the particle system is selected now. Go to the modify tab and particle view. I'm going to delete this. Select it, right click, and delete, and then add a birth operator. That's just a quick way of eliminating a bunch of those operators that we don't need here. I'm going to go to the birth operator here and set the emit stop to zero and the amount to one. Then I'm going to take a data preset and drag that right between these two. Select particle per vertex. You can see here that this spawns one particle per vertex and click OK. Now I'll select that and this requires an object to place the particles on. So click here and click the sphere. And you can see now that the sphere is covered with particles, one at each vertex. Now I'm going to put a shape operator in here. I'm going to make it a sphere, a higher resolution sphere. And I'm going to set the size to 5 to start. So let's just try rendering this and see what we get. So you can see here that because the spheres are all the same size, they touch in the smaller circles and get farther away from one another as we get closer to the equator. And what we're going to do in this tutorial is to have the spheres adjust their size based on how far apart they are from one another to get bigger when they're farther apart. I'll just get out of this. Now I'm going to take this down to 1 and drag in a new data operator just below particle per vertex. Go to that data operator and edit data flow. The first thing we need here is a particles sub-operator. Bring that in. It defaults to closest particle distance, which is exactly what we need. Now with that selected, I'm going to drag in an output new. And the reason to have that selected is that that makes this match with this. And I can connect them up without having to have any conversion. Now the reason to have the output operator is that no particles will be created unless they're needed. And this sub-operator, the closest particle distance sub-operator, won't think it needs to create any particles unless there's an output. But as it stands right now, if I right click here and show data, there's still no particles. And the reason for that is we don't have auto update in our data operator. So I'm going to select that. So it still had zero there, but that's just a delay while it calculates, I think. So let's just try that again. And here we have our data. So these are the distances between the particles. And you can see this one is the one particle at the pole. The distance is quite large. And all these are the same. These are the particles in the next circle. And if we scroll down a bit, we'll get to the next circle 
you know, the particles are even farther apart from one another, and the next circle still farther apart, and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the data from this operator to multiply the size of our particles. So the larger the distance, the larger the particle will become. To do that, we're going to select an output standard. Select scale. Since that's what we want to do, we want to scale the particles. And average is just fine. By the way, we won't need this anymore. I can delete this now because we've got our other output here. And connect those. And that should be all it takes. We're going to scale the size of the particles based on how far they are from one another. So let's try rendering this. And you can see that that has worked. Particles are smaller when they're not very far from each other and bigger and bigger as they get farther away from one another. Now one other thing we're going to do here, this particle distance is being calculated now on each and every frame. That's what happens by default. In this case, since there's no change from frame to frame, we really don't need that. So we're going to take an input standard sub-operator and select new in event right there. That gives us this filter output that we can use to this filter input. So I'll just connect those. Now this will only happen when the particle is new in the event. It won't happen on every frame. That doesn't actually change what this looks like now, but it would save us some CPU cycles. So that's all there is to this. I hope that you found this useful and interesting, and thanks for tuning in.